Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. A lot of you guys have been requesting a more informative video from me. So today we're gonna to be talking about the main differences between my Belgian Malinois and my Dobermans. probably watching this video because you're deciding on getting a Belgian or a Doberman. So just gonna talk about some main key points in this video today, kind of describing both differences between uh, the two different breeds and wanted to mention that this is my personal opinion and my own personal experience yeah. with my dogs. There's breed stereotypes and everything, but not all dogs fit in the same mold or category. But just wanted to put it out there that this is my own personal experience and it may be different and vary from person to person or even dog to dog. So we're gonna break this video up into a couple of different sections. We're gonna talk about physical appearance between the two, temperament and personality, energy and exercise requirements, ability and working abilities, health considerations, and finally family life and compatibility. So those are kind of the major topics. I feel like those are kind of the most important about the two. So the first topic I wanted to touch on was physical appearance. Okay, I'm getting bombarded. Obviously these two breeds are completely different. If you're debating on getting one or the other, it kind of just depends on the size, obviously, and the coat care. So let's kind of touch on both of those topics. Let's talk about the Dobies. Before you get any dog or do research about any dog, it is really important to learn about the history of each of the breeds. I'm not gonna go in too much depth, but it is important to know why they were bred and the purpose for them. So Dobermans, if you guys were not aware before this video, they were actually bred for personal protection, more of a deterrent. They were created by Louis Doberman, and I'm not sure of the exact year, but they were bred to go with him on his tax runs because he was a tax collector. He wanted a really intimidating looking dog. So that is why he he created the Doberman, so they are a very good deterrent and just naturally wary of strangers. Dobermans do come in a couple of different colors. According to the AKC, I will post a photo of the AKC accepted colors of Dobermans here. FCI only allows black and rust or brown Dobies, so they don't have a whole rainbow of Doberman colors that they allow for breed standard. However, Malinois, I feel like do come in a variety of different colors. There's a lot. I'm not super well versed on the Belgian Malinois colors, but there is a good amount. Bretta here is a more of a darker colored Mal with a black mask. I forgot what her color is exactly called. I believe it's stable. I could be wrong. So that's something to look into if you are dependent or you do care about coat color. Dobermans kind of have less variety compared to the Malinois. Obviously, if you want a bigger dog, you're gonna wanna get a Doberman. They are a lot more muscular. They kind of have a lot more weight on them. According to FCI standards, which, which is the European Doberman standard, females range from 70 to 77, and then males range from 88 to 99 pounds. So it's kind of a big jump there, but the females do stay around 70-ish to 77. Katana here actually fluctuates from, I think the most she is is usually like 80, just kind of depending on the year and if she's on like her heat cycle or not. Draco here stays at a constant 80 to 85 pounds, but he has never reached 90 at all. Obviously this is gonna depend on the breeder you go to and both of their parents, depending on how heavy they are, that kind of gives you a good idea of how big your dogs are gonna get. As for the Belgian Malinois, they are considered herding dogs. So they're in the same family of all the shepherds. They come from Belgium with them being a history of um, herding dogs. As you can see, Beretta is always chasing fast things, always looking for things to chase or people to herd. So that is kind of their history. Just kind of a brief overview of the two. So as for the Belgian Malinois, males range from 60 to 80 pounds and females range from 40 to 60 pounds, which I feel like is such a big jump weight wise, because you can either get a really, really big mal or kind of like a more medium size, like on the smaller end mal. Beretta personally is around, I believe she's around 40 to 45 pounds. She's still really small. She's also still a puppy. So she is slowly gaining weight here and there, but like look at her and Draco. They're just at it 24 seven like this. As for coat care, what are they doing? Dobermans obviously have more short and kind of like little tiny eyelashes when they shed and their fur kind of makes me itchy at times because it's really pokey, but they don't have a double coat or anything. They're very easy grooming wise. Shedding is kind of to a minimum. It's very easy maintenance, low maintenance, and they really do stay clean and bath time is honestly a breeze. Another huge thing to consider with getting a Doberman if you do choose to do so, you can either do cropped or uncropped. Both of my dogs have cropped ears and it was done by the breeder and we did have to maintain the ear 
you're posting. I have a whole video on that if you guys wanna check that out. I'm not gonna go too in depth with that one, but that is something that you're gonna have to deal with, which is, by the way, not an easy process and it is a long process. As for the Belgian Malinois on the other hand, Beretta hasn't started shedding yet, but I do know that Malinois have shed seasons and they kind of have that like tuft on their butt that you can like pull out and it's just like a bunch of fur everywhere, which I'm not looking forward to, but she still is a puppy and I really haven't experienced any crazy shedding seasons with her yet. I'm just waiting for that day to come, but I know when that day comes, I'm going to just take her to the groomers or just brush her myself. She stays pretty clean as well. That's pretty much it for the Dobie or for the Malinois. We're gonna talk about, about now training and workability between the two. You're probably thinking that, let's say you wanna get a Doberman and you wanna do bite sports with the Doberman. So you go to a random breeder, you get a puppy, and you tell your trainer, I want to do bright sports with this dog. I want my dog to be a personal protection dog and to protect me. And you probably expect the dog or the Doberman to do the work. And I just wanted to mention that that cannot be completely more far from the truth in getting a dog specifically for working capabilities. But if you're getting a dog specifically for bite sports and you wanna do bite sports with your Doberman, I would highly recommend going to a reputable breeder that actually breeds for bite work. Just because Doberman lines, they've been watered down to pets and they don't work like the original Doberman. So a lot of them are really chill, like Katana here, she's just big chillin'. They could care less about biting. I've seen a lot of people's dobies not excel in bite sports and a lot of them get discouraged and i would say that like oh you can just work them up to be more into it but it's gonna be a lot more difficult with a breed like the doberman just because they've just been watered down and that's just how it is nowadays and they're considered an off breed now for bite sports i just really got lucky with draco and he really really loves doing bite work and he has the drive for it katana on the other hand could care less about biting or touching a sleeve or anything. She really just doesn't enjoy it. But if you're looking for a dog specifically for bite sports and you want a Doberman, my advice to you is to find a breeder that actually breeds for those qualities and for those traits in bite work. You can't just get a random Doberman off of Craigslist and expect them to excel in bite sports. That's just not their genetic disposition and genetics really do take you far. That's why I'm telling you guys, if you want a Doberman to do bite sports, please just go to a reputable breeder that breeds for those qualities and for those traits. With Miss Psycho Bitch and Bite Sports, she was literally biting the moment I brought her ass home. She would bite my pants, my ankles, my husband. She would bite them. She was like hurting literally every single thing that was running and moving. And that's genetics. Both of her parents excelled in bite sports. Um, Malinois in general, I mean, they're herding dogs. They want to bite and that's what they were bred to do. She was very extremely mouthy and never once when she was a puppy, I've ever shut her down from biting. That's just how she is. And that's why I got her. I got her specifically for bite sports and that's what I got. You can find a lot more Malinois that are bred to do bite sports versus Dobies. Um, like I said, Dobies are bred more for pet. There's not many Dobies that are doing bite sports in general um but malinois on the other hand you'll find a lot more breeders that breed malinois specifically for bright sports or personal protection than you will with a doberman and that's just genetic disposition and how it is nowadays unfortunately as for trainability wise they're highly biddable dogs they always want to work and they're always wanting to please me however i didn't get draco until he was four months old because i imported him from serbia with that being said Four months is a very long development process for a dog to go through from, you know, puppy puppyhood. They're able to go home at like, what, six to eight weeks. When I got Draco at four months, I feel like I did miss a crucial part of his development stages versus me getting Beretta at like, eight weeks old. I was able to train her and hand feed her and crate train her. I was just able to be a lot more hands-on and do all this like really, really young, small dog puppy things with her. It just took me a longer time to work on all that with him. And Katana I got when she was an adult. So we're not gonna have to touch on that too much, but I feel like that did shape their behavior and kind of their temperament. Draco and Katana like to think more before they do something. They kind of are more methodical thinkers and they like to think things through before just going straight to it. Draco is very, very smart. You can see his brain is working, like actively working. He thinks about things when I tell him a command. It really feels like I'm talking to him and he just listens right away. Dobermans are very easily trainable. They really do want to work for you and 
I feel like they're just like they're just sweet little innocent babies and they're just so derpy and they kind of have like this really goofy huh? personality because they look really really scary on the outside but on the inside they're just like these sweet little like stupid Ooh. babies and they are at the end of the day working dogs I feel like our bond grows stronger every single day versus the Belgian Malinois such as Beretta and I feel like she's the classic Mal her brain fires at like a hundred miles per hour. Like I can't even put it into words how quickly she thinks and how fast she is with things. She picks up on things extremely, extremely quickly. If you give her an inch, she will literally take a mile. She is not a dog where you can just make silly mistakes with because if you teach her wrong the first time, it will be very, very hard for her to unlearn those bad habits. Next up is energy and exercise requirements. Energy level wise, I would say compared to a Malinois, a Doberman is like down here and the Malinois is like up here. The difference is insane. Dobermans are known as Velcro dogs, and I can assure you that that statement is correct. I mean, these dogs are attached to me at the hip. They follow me everywhere. They're literally my shadow. It's just, it's a Doby thing. And there's a lot of things that Dobermans do that people are like, ah, that's a Doby thing, um, such as suckling blankets. Very, very strange. Katana likes to suck on her flank and that's called flank sucking. It's not because she's anxious or got taken away from mom too early, but temperament wise, I believe in my opinion, Dobermans are a lot more calm. I didn't realize, I'm like, oh, they're both working dogs. Like when I was getting Beretta, I was like, I can handle a Belgian Manual, which I can, don't get me wrong. I can definitely handle her. He is just a spazzy, crazy girl. So to put everything into perspective, Beretta is just more crazy. Like for example, I'm playing that katana, excuse me, my love. I'm playing fetch with the dogs in the backyard. And if I held this toy up, Draco would never, like if it's above my head, Draco would never jump for it or katana. They would just wait for me to throw it. But Beretta, being Beretta, she will jump up, but taller than me, and she'll jump up for the toy, and that's just how she is. She doesn't do that anymore. But when she was younger, she was just absolutely insane, and that's, I guess, the best way I can describe a Malinois is just crazy, insane, psycho. She is not for the faint of heart and she's not for, I believe a first time dog owner cannot handle a Belgian Malinois. But if you're a first time dog owner, you may be able to handle a Doberman. I, however, don't want people to think that Dobermans are any less easier than a Belgian Malinois, especially when it comes to energy and exercise level. They both still require mental and physical exercise. And I guess that's where they can be a little bit similar. I don't want anyone to think that, oh, Dobermans are easier. I'll just get a Doberman. They're still difficult dogs. Dogs. But since we are comparing the two, Belgian Malinois are just a lot more compared to the Doberman. Belgian Malinois are just up here and Dobies are just a little bit less than that. That's what I'm trying to say. This part of the section of the video, I feel like is gonna make me cry and I'm gonna get really emotional or something. But we're gonna talk about the health differences between the breeds and some things to consider. So Dobermans, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, they're a very unhealthy breed. And if you don't have the money to deal with health issues or if you don't have the money to deal with pet insurance then they are not a breed for you and i really would highly not recommend them um, just because of how expensive their health bills can be i spend so much money annually on both of them to get their parts checked out so it's four thousand a year for them to go meet with the cardiologist and that's something to think about i wish someone was just straight up and just told me like dobermans are so freaking unhealthy and that was a big thing to consider but i have both of them now and they're my responsibility and i love them very much i would do anything for them so if you guys didn't know this dobermans are prone to something called dcm <laughs> As I was saying, Dobermans are prone to a heart condition called DCM, AKA dilated cardiomyopathy. I'm not gonna go into detail because this isn't about DCM. I can make a whole video about DCM, but the heart gets really messed up, okay? And you need to meet with a cardiologist annually so they can check up on their hearts to make sure nothing is abnormal, that it sounds okay, and their heart isn't getting fucked up over the years. The only thing about DCM is it is known as a silent killer. It, usually goes undetected. So once your dog already starts showing symptoms of DCM, by that time, it's honestly, it's too late. And that's why it's known as a silent killer because there's also no cure or anything. With me taking them to the cardiologist annually, we're able to catch it early. If it does, knock on wood, hopefully it never happens. But if it does end up on happening, 
we're able to catch it early and we're able to do some preemptive care and get them on medication quickly before they deteriorate super quickly, literally almost like overnight. 60% of Dobermans are affected by DCMs. The chance of survival rate of DCM is extremely, extremely low. They're more of like a ticking time bomb and I wish a lot more Doberman creators talked about DCM just because it's so prevalent in the breed. I mean, 60%. That is so many dogs, guys. 100 Dobermans in a room, 60 of them are getting DCM or dying prematurely of DCM. That is such a huge percentage and I just wish it was talked about more. Look at Katana, her tongue is sticking out. So that is the main killer in Dobermans. They're overall expensive, unhealthy. They have hip dysplasia, they have DCM. Like those are two very expensive conditions to treat. Malinois on the other hand, they're generally unhealthy. I mean, when I was doing research about them, there really wasn't much. However, they're prone to hip dysplasia and eye disease, but it's nothing too crazy compared to the Dobermans and DCM. Like Dobermans and DCM, they go hand in hand, unfortunately, but with Malinois, they don't really have any crazy genetic dispositions. I feel like most large dog breeds do get hip dysplasia. With Beretta, she's gonna be okay with getting annual exams and blood work and stuff like that, and she'll be fine. Dobermans, on the other hand, you're talking about cardiologists, normal blood work, echoes, 24-hour Holter monitors. Honestly, the list goes on. It gets very expensive and it does add up, so. That is something that I really, really wanted to highlight between the differences of the two. If you do not have the money to take them to the cardiologist annually, please don't get a Doberman. That is like the bare minimum, I feel like, of Doberman ownership is being able to take them to a cardiologist. And I can't stress that enough. And if you're unable to do that, the Doberman breed will unfortunately not be right for you. I would look into other breeds, but that is something that every Doberman owner or everyone thinking about getting a Doberman should be well aware about. Something else I wanted to touch on was kind of like household and if the breeds are able to chill in the household. All my dogs surprisingly chill in the household perfectly fine. After I train them, they're usually very, very calm, chill, well collected, and they don't cause a absolute ruckus in my household unless I allow them to. This isn't even a breed thing. It just comes with proper training and setting boundaries in your home. A lot of people do have the misconception that since I have all these crazy working breeds that like my dogs just run crazy and amok in my home and that could not be further from the truth. My dogs are very, very well trained. I put in a lot of time, <laughs> energy and effort with these dogs and they know better to not jump on the couch. They're not allowed on the bed, unless I tell them they're allowed on the bed. They're not allowed to run through doors or run outside our front door without me allowing them to do so. So just little things like that definitely makes a world's difference. <laughs> so yeah. All right, so those were the main differences and topics that I wanted to cover between my Belgian Malinois and my Dobermans. If you guys had any other questions or suggestions too, if you wanted me to make a part two of this video, I totally can. And we can talk about some other things maybe that I've missed in the video. But these were kind of the main topics that I wanted to discuss. And the main topics that a lot of people ask me about too with like the differences between them. At the end of the day, they're both absolutely amazing dogs and I couldn't ask for better dogs or examples of the breed. I feel like both Draco and Beretta are really like just the average Doberman versus Malinois you're gonna get. Really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys don't mind, please comment, like, and subscribe. As you can see, I'm being a lot more active on YouTube as I've been in the past. So I really, really appreciate your guys' love and support. And if you guys have any other video ideas too, definitely let me know. Your feedback honestly means a lot to me. But thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.